Hey y'all, how are you today? Hi, hi. Hope everybody's doing good. Let me find, pull up, um, there we are. Make sure my volume's working. Yes. And do not disturb, get this pulled up to see comments. All right, hi, happy Wednesday afternoon. I hope everybody's having a good day and things are going very well for you. For those who don't know me, my name is Laurie Yen and I am a design coach in Julie Samako's Reef of the Month Club. And Julie has invited me in here uh, on her page to design a uh, reef with you all today. And I'm super excited to be here. Um, so in the reef industry, we are always moving a little bit ahead of um, the current season. And that's what we're doing in the Reef of the Month Club. And I thought I would jump on here and do one with you. So we are going to be designing something with Mardi Gras today. That is an event coming up um, right after Thanksgiving, I mean, right after New Year's. And I thought I would go ahead and design a Mardi Gras swag for you today, okay? There are a lot of fun, um, you know, Mardi Gras is over the top, and the more elaborate you can make them, the better they are enjoyed. So um, that's what we're going to try to do today. I'm going to bring you down for just a minute and show you some of the things that I have that might go into the uh, swag. Um, when you're designing freestyle, you always go with what you're feeling, and I have pulled out quite a bit of supplies just to see what I'd like to incorporate into the swag, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna bring you down. All right, get my trusty glasses on. Hello everybody, hi Tracy. I'm glad you're joining me. Yes, yes, here we go. All right, so this is my inspiration. This is the sign. Um, I enjoy uh, designing on circular uh, metal signs when it comes to swags. This is a 10 inch. Uh, I preferably don't go any larger than a 10 inch um, and really enjoy designing with an 8 inch uh, sign as well. But I have this one and this is my inspiration and that's what I'm going to pull from. So because the background is white on this one, I chose a white pine swag. This is a 24 inch, and we are gonna go with this. I'll pull the sign up a little bit closer to you. As you can see, this is like a bright gold or almost yellow looking. And the colors are really, um, they're not bold like jump out at you. They're strong and pretty. Uh, but they're delicate also. So that's the other thing I'm thinking about when I'm designing. All right, so we have this sign right here on a white swag. And the three ribbons I have chosen are these right here. I think they'll be very pretty with this sign. All right, I've got these three. I have some picks that we're going to incorporate to mimic the uh, sign. So I have some of them I might throw in. I have some ball sprays, Mardi Gras ball sprays I'm thinking about. I have green and purple that I might put in here. And I have some uh, purple, green, and gold fern that I always enjoy using in this one as well. Okay, I'm 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 a, the, a greenery floral girl, and I might put a little bit of this greenery in. I'm not sure, but I brought it over, and then I have this gorgeous pick right here that I might put in. This one is really fun. I love that one. And then I have some purple and gold curls that I might put in. If I do, I will make my own pick with these and put in. 
Okay. <clears throat> All right. Last but not least, I'm going to get this all out of the way. I am going to put some purple deco mesh in uh, my swag. And the reason why is I want to bring that purple out. Um, the purple in this sign is um, the color that I'm choosing to pull out. You could use green. You could use a yellow or a gold. Or you can even choose a, you know, a multiple of it. But for this sign, I want it to be simplistic, yet pretty and over the top. So that's why I'm going with only one color right now. Okay, so let's get started. Now, the way I incorporate mesh into my swags or designs, I just want to use the mesh as filler and um, I'm not interested in making the mesh a part of the design other than filling my base sorry let me get this off and so there's no right or wrong way to incorporate mesh you can measure it out on your design table on your um, mat or a ruler. Um, I have been doing this a long time and I don't do that anymore. I used to, but I don't do it anymore. I am more about let's get it and go. So I'm sure you've seen others do it. I just pull it out. Let me get this an even cut right across here. And I bring it up. Let me, there you go. I bring it up to about my chin level. You can measure it out as far as length long. This is gonna be about 18 inches and I just simply cut. I just go across and cut. And I might cut 10 of these up and we'll see what we, if we need some more, we'll cut some more. How's everybody doing this afternoon? It is midweek, and I hope you all have had a good week so far. I'm just, look, nobody is going to know the length of these. Um, and I am not interested in perfection on cutting this deco mesh. Let's see, two, four, six, seven, three more to go. And um, so that's why I'm not necessarily worried about the exact length or length of these. One more. I think that's plenty. All right. Hello from New Orleans. <laughs> yes, thus is the time. Uh, we don't celebrate New Orleans here. I mean, uh, Mardi Gras here in North Carolina but it sure appears to be fun. Uh, and I know a lot of people enjoy Mardi Gras. All right, all right, so now what I do is I just take the two ends that are curled and I curl them over a little bit more and I just pinch them together, just like that. I'll start at the top and with two twist ties, not twist ties, pine tie needle ties, I'm just gonna twist it in just like that. See that? I'm going to come down. The, the trick here is to keep it as evenly spaced as possible. Um, it's okay if you don't get it exact. But we, like I said, we're just filling the base. Okay, now I, ha I will say this, I skipped over this. I have gone in and I have pulled all my needle ties up to make them come to life, right? Hi, Gaynor, how are you? Okay, I'm gonna jump down here again. And I'm going to fill again. Now, what I'm doing is I'm turning the deco mesh down. All right. 
so it so both ends will come out and this is going to build our base up if you don't get it quite evenly dispersed you can always go in and move them I have done that before as well we're coming down to the end I'm going to put one down here at the bottom and we're going to come right back up the other side see what we have so far just like that I'm going to turn it around and bring it up the other side <clears throat> Oh, thank you. I'm good, too. I'm good, too, sweetie. We are very busy here in the shop as well as my home. I am, um, we are doing a lot of renovation right here at Christmas, which was not a smart thing to do, but um, we decided to go ahead and get it done before the end of the year. We um, host Christmas for my husband's side of the family and he wanted to get it done before Christmas happened so we have quite a bit going on here I don't even have Christmas decorations up at the moment um, we are painting the house this week and having a floors put in next week and so I am hoping after that takes place, I can get some Christmas decorations going. Hi, Robin. How are you? I hope everybody's doing good on your end. Okay, again, I am just tucking these under and pinching, okay? You can do this any way you'd like. You don't even have to fill the base up with deco mesh. If you wanted to do it with greenery or anything else, you could. But I love the purple <coughs> of this, and I think it bodes really well with the, um, the sign. All right, I'm going to put my last piece right here. Pull that a little bit right like that. All right, that's what we have, right? Very quick and easy. <clears throat> you don't have your decorations up? What in the world? Thank you so much for telling me that. Now I don't feel so bad. <laughs> um, when my kids come home and I don't have those kid decorations up, they are going to be mighty upset. But that'll be all right. It, they'll be up. All right. Um, let's see. Hang on just one second. What size is the white tree you're doing? Okay, so this is a swag. And this that swag is 24 inches. So, um, so it's about 24 inches long from tip to tip. All right. All right, so I'm going to put this up on my easel bring my easel in just a little bit I'm gonna bring you back up hi hi and I'm going to pull you in because we are going to do the sign now all right everybody see that is that good for you I think it is okay so here we go now I know that I want a bow right here. I know I want that. And I want a smaller bow down here. And I need to figure out how big I want my bow. And the way I need to do that is first figure out exactly where I want my sign to go. Okay? Now, I'm going to tell you the trick, the other reason 
why I chose to use deco mesh to fill in this swag or on this swag is because of the size of my sign. Before I had put deco mesh in, I didn't have much length or width, not length, width right here for this sign, right? And I wanted to make sure that proportionally or the size of my sign and the size of my swag matched. So if I come in here and I put it right here, I have some sides over here and I have some sides over here that I can work with. If I had not put the deco mesh in, I would not have had that much to work with. The other thing that we need to remember is this was a teardrop swag. In other words, the, in other words, the shape was teardrop. And that is still what I am interested in keeping. In other words, up here is really wide. Down here gets very short. All right. So I'm going to try to keep in that form or shape. So now that I have a little, I've added a little bit to the sides, I can come in here and figure out exactly where I want my sign to go. Now, like I said, I know I'm going to put a bow up here. <clears throat> Do I want my sign straight? I am not a straight signed kind of girl. I like it off to one side. I like this right here, maybe a little bit higher. Let me figure this out. Just give me a second. Trying to find one of the longer ties to see if I can get it to rest on there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm going to do this right here. I'm going to put it right here. I think I'm going to put it here and I'm going to put my bow over here. Okay. So now what I can do is I can mark that. So I have pushed one of my ties down. And I am going to push one of my ties up, which is right here. And that's going to let me know where I want my sign to go. Okay. Anybody have any questions on that? Yeah. So it looks like we're good. All right. So let's make our bow. <clears throat> I have three ribbons. Two, two and a half and one, one and a half. They are very pretty. And I think they go very well with the uh, sign. Look at that one. Is that not gorgeous? So pretty, so pretty and delicate. And I think that matches the theme of the sign. But the first one I wanna do is, I wanna do this stripe right here. And I want to see how long I want my loops to go. So I'm going to test it. All right. I'm going to give myself a ribbon streamer. Just like that right there. And I'm going to measure out 6 inches. And let's, I mean 12 inches. And let's see what a 6 inch loop looks like. Put my sign up here. And let's see. Now, I've got my little marker right here, so I know I can put my sign up here. All right. I think I like seven. Let's try seven. Let's see what a seven-inch loop looks like. Okay. Yes. I think to start out with, we're going to do a seven-inch loop. That certainly will attract your viewer's eye. All right. So let's measure out 14 more inches. So if you are measuring it out, you're going to measure 14 inches and make a 
seven inch loop. If you are measuring on the Easy Bow Maker, you are gonna do a seven inch loop. Really vibrant, pretty ribbon right here. Okay, and that's what we have. All right, I am going to cut maybe a 10 inch tail. If I have to cut even more, I can do that later. Uh, let's see, it doesn't matter. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is do my other two and a half inch. Now, I have two on top, two loops on top, and one on bottom, on the bottom. Now, I want to reverse that process, okay? I want two loops on the bottom and one loop on the top. So, instead of beginning with my tail down, now I'm going to begin with my tail up. It helps balance the, um, the bow out for you. Okay, I've got my bow going up at the top. I'm going to measure out another 14 inches for a seven inch loop. And I am just pinching and pleating into my fingers and then I'm twisting. We're gonna do another seven inch loop. Pinch and pleat and twist. And one more. Pinch, pleat, and twist. Okay, and we are going to measure out another 10 inches. Isn't that pretty? Such pretty ribbon. All right, now I need to move my tail, I mean my loops, where I want them to go. So all I'm doing is I'm just picking up my loop and I am moving them around and working them into the position I want them to be. I'm gonna make sure my tails are at the back and I can move them later once I get this all twisted down, but that's what we have so far. Okay. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some of this in. This is one and a half inch. I'm going to reverse it again the same way I did previously at this point. And instead of doing 14 inches or 7 inch loops, I'm going to do 12 inches or 6 inch loops. So when I say 12 inches, that means I'm measuring it out 12 inches to make a 6 inch loop. Okay? I want these to be a little bit smaller. I'm going to pinch, pleat, and twist. I bought myself a little Christmas present the other day. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> but I got one of those ribbon holders, spool holders from um, Hot Mesh Mom the other day, and I am super excited to get it. I cannot wait. You know, we have to treat ourselves, right? We have to treat ourselves at some point, right? Well, that's what I did. I said, I have been designing for such a long time and don't have one. I am going to get. All right. And that's what we have. So pretty. <clears throat> I'm going to take a florist wire, right? I'm going to turn my hand over like I'm checking my watch. That's what Julie says. I'm going to pick my pointer, pointer finger up. I'm going to slide that wire right underneath my finger and I'm going to wrap it around the center of the bow and I'm going to pull real tightly. Okay? 
Now at this point, I'm going to adjust my loops on exactly where I want them to be, right? Just like that. Now, I'm going to pull with my dominant hand the wire away from me. I'm going to pull. With the hand that is holding the bow, I'm going to pull it towards me. And what happens is it gives tension. It helps tighten that wire down when you twist it to make your bow, okay? So that's what I'm doing. I'm pu pulling away from me and I'm pulling towards me at the same time and I'm going to twist. What did you use as the base of your wreaths? On this one, we're using a white 24 inch um, swag base. Yes, bows can be difficult for people and honestly, um, you can choose the best way to help you, if you want to hand, learn to hand tie, um, start hand tying. If you want to use a easy bow maker or something along that line, start doing that. But in both incident, incidents, the, the best way you're going to get good at making bows is practice. Practice, practice, practice. Um, oh, Tina, thank you so much. That is so kind of you. I try, I have a heart for sharing, um, what I know with other people. I think the good Lord made me that way. I want to help. I've been in your situation. Uh, I, I have been, you know, there are things that I want to learn about and it would have, it's nice when people share how they do things. Um, and so I'm just trying to pass that on to you. So Elise, what is a swag base? Okay, a swag base is just a floral form, okay? This right here is called a teardrop swag. And the reason why it is, is it's in the shape of a teardrop, right? It's wider across the top and it's skinnier at the bottom. But this is what is called a swag and this is a swag base. There are other swags that are not teardrop. They just go completely down, right? And then they're no different than, um, I thought I had a read. They're, they're no different than, you know, any other form that you design on. They're just, uh, these are just called swags. Okay. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. So this is Julie's method. It's uh, very educational. It helps um, you... Uh, to figure out the size loops you want and um, you know her method turn makes a very pretty bow doesn't it it sure does okay so I am going to put this right here but before I do I'm gonna put my sign on first okay this is a metal sign a lot of times we can get signs that are already have holes in them this one does not and so what i need to do is use a jewel smith tool right and this is just a little tool that i can punch through metal with and that's what i'm going to do so where my marker was i first of all i am going to cut down this is a long tie and i know this tie is not gonna um It'll be under my sign, and I might come in here and cut this one down. And that's okay to cut down. It is perfectly fine. I'm just trying to make a little bit of space behind my sign. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to figure out exactly where I want my hole to be. Okay. Okay. 
and I think this right here is where I want my hole to be. Now look, you can put your sign anywhere. I am not a straight on kind of gal. <laughs> All right, I like my stuff off-centered a little bit. Um, it adds to me, for me, it adds more interest. So this is where my sign is, and this is where my bow is going to go. All right, and I'm going to put some filler stuff or a streamer right here. So I have figured out where I want my sign, right? So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to punch a hole here. Okay, I've got one hole here. And then I'm going to pinch a hole right here. And all I'm doing, let me show you, is I'm just taking this tool and I'm just punching a little hole in it. Okay? Everybody see that? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take two pieces of florist wire. And the reason why I'm using white is I have a white base. If you do not have white, it's not necessary that you use white. You use whatever color you need to or you have on hand because we're going to cover it up. So I'm sticking it through the sign hole or the metal hole. I'm wrap twisting it one time. I'm going to come up in here and I am just going to wire it to the base right here. The only thing about using the same color as your base is you can lose your wire. Makes it kind of hard to see it. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist it down on the base. Make sure I've got it on the right side, which I did not. Okay, now listen, I am not pulling it tightly. Let me pull you in a little bit so I can show you. Okay, I'm not pulling it down tightly because what happens is it makes my dash a mesh around it lay flat. I'm not doing that. I'm pulling it out and I want my sign to sit up straight. And that's what it's doing. Okay. So I'm going to wire it in right here, and then I'm going to show you how you can fix it. Because it might appear to be a little floppy, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. Okay? So this is where I'm at so far. It's not pulled in so tight that it's smashing my deco mesh. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. Let me see if I can pull you in a little bit closer so you can see. Right, I'm going to come right in here. Here's my hole. All right, I'm going to put my wire through it through my hole. I'm going to get it to go through it. I'm going to wire it down to the base, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do right like this let me find my other wire where'd it go there it is okay I'm wiring it to the base right here I usually twist about a half an inch to two inches. I'm not two inches, Lord help you, Lorian. Uh, usually a half inch to maybe an inch. Okay, I got a piece of deco mesh that came off. I might have done that by accident. So I'm just going to twist it back together. Okay, now I want to show you this twist tie right here is where my measurement was. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that twist tie and I'm going to bend it over where my wire is. Okay? I'm going to do the same thing up here. 
I'm just going to bend it over just a little bit, right, to kind of cover it up. But what that does is that's kind of like a little shelf or a little um, way that the sign will stay where it is. Let me show you up close, okay? So you know what I'm talking about. Y'all help y'all I'm y'all know I'm not this camera can make you do things backwards. See this right here? See how I have bent it over? Well that helps the sign have some place to sit. Okay? And then up here at the top, my ribbon toes are probably gonna cover it up, but I'm gonna take a a um, pine needle and I'm just gonna push it down and that covers it up a little bit. See that? Okay, let's keep going. All right, so there we have our sign and it's sitting off to one side, which is what I like. Sorry. Now I'm gonna put my bow in Okay, and I need to figure out exactly how I want my bow to lay. And I think I want my bow to lay just like that. I'm gonna feed this in. And I am going to wire it to the spine of the swag, which is the middle back portion. That's what that is. But I want to tell you again, just like the sign, I am not going to pull it down completely. Let me get my finger on this if I can. There you go. Okay. Now, I have not pulled it down so hard that my loops lose their shape. Okay. That's one thing you're you don't want to do. Don't pull pull it so hard when you're trying to put it in place that your loops lose their shape. All right. Let's see. I like that. I'm going to twist this or tie this down. Just like this. All right. Now, let's get our loops and our tails exactly we, where we want them to be. And here's the trick also when you're working with uh, an evergreen or a pine base is you can use the white ties to help your loops stay where you want them to stay. You can put them in, inside of it and they will stay right there. You can bend them in and they'll stay right there for you. Okay, I've got two side by side right here. I don't want that, so I'm gonna move that over. I don't want each, I don't want my loops to be the same right beside each other, unless you're talking about in the middle, which is right like this. I'm going to come back in and cut my ribbon tails down eventually. But for right now, that is what we have. Oh, very pretty. What do y'all think? Let's see if anybody has any questions. Uh, thank you, Sylvia. Yes, I think everybody's doing good. Let's keep going. All right. I will come in and cut this down eventually. Um, but for right now, we need to make a bow right here. Okay? It's not going to be as big as this one. I'm going to incorporate all three ribbons. Okay? I want a long tail right here. I can always cut it down. But let's see how big we want it. 
Do I want it six inches? Very pretty. Very pretty. <clears throat> I think that's what I'm going to go with. Very pretty. Uh, Linda. Uh, sweetie, I use 22 inch gauge. Or 22, not 22 inch. 22 gauge. 22 gauge. Okay. I have made this tail longer and this tail shorter. Because what's going to happen is... This tail is going to come out to the side, but I don't want to lose my form or my shape right here. I definitely want this one to be longer. The whole goal in designing is to help the viewer's eye see your design. And so I want the viewer to start at the top. I want their eye to come through my design and... Uh, uh, cascade down to the bottom so with that right there with my tail being longer it's going to help the viewer who's looking at the design go all the way down and it's going to come down to the bottom right does that make sense I hope it does we always want to help the individual who is looking at our design our eyes are the laziest part of our body and we as designers have to help our viewers eye look through the design okay Connie sweetie I know you are I saw your um I saw your um question and we are working on it uh I did ask Taylor Taylor said she would have it up this afternoon. I was going to make sure that you knew that after this tutorial. I was going to come in and say that's where it is. I promise you, honey, I will tag you when it is up. Okay? I just did that on a Saturday whim. I just jumped in the group and... Um, didn't even think about it when I, you know, was taken care of last month. But it is, I have not, we, I know that's what you want, honey, and I'm going to get it for you, okay? There's someone else wanting it also. All right, so let's keep going. Good, sweetie. I hadn't forgot about you, I promise. Um, so let's keep going. I'm still just doing one loop. Okay. I'm just pinching, pleating, and then twisting. Okay? And there we go. That's what we have. Okay? I've got three that are shorter tails, and i got three longer tails, and that's where I'm going to put it. So, just one loop each. I'm going to take my floor wire, turn it over. Pick my finger up, wrap it around, and pull it very tight. Make sure I have things right where I want them. Okay, and I'm going to twist. Now, I'm twisting the bow. I'm not twisting the wire. Be careful twisting the wire because you can break it. And if you break it, that's fine. Um, you know, you just rewire it, but that's just a little pointer I wanted to add in there. I always twist the bow, not the wire. Okay, let me get these ribbon tails doved. Let me dove these ribbon tails. So, all I'm doing is I am pulling my ribbon, I'm putting the two edges together and I'm cutting downward at an angle. One more. Okay. All right. There we go. That's what we have. 
I'm going to wrap this around the spine right here. And I'm just going to manipulate or move my tails around and get them looking pretty. There we go, just like that. I'm going to bring it closer to you so you can see it. See that right there? And see that right there. Now, you could you could come in here and dovetail these ribbon streamers right here and finish. And that would be an absolutely gorgeous Mardi Gras wreath, uh, swag. You could do that. Um, at this point, you could stop if you chose if you chose to. If you were only gonna do the sign and bows, I would put the sign in the actual middle. Um, I'm not doing that at the moment, but you could do that and it would be gorgeous, okay? Very simple design, but pretty. <clears throat> Where did I get my easel? So the easel that I have, I'm cleaning this up real quick. The easel, the back of the easel I have is uh, from Hobby Lobby. And then this portion right here, my father and I made um, many moons ago. So I like to see how my design is going to look on a door while I'm designing. And so I came up with this and that's why. I use this. I like to see what it's going to look like. Okay, now the fun part. We get to add some stuff. Now, one thing you could do before I move away from ribbon is I have some of this really pretty green. I don't have much of it, but I could come in here and I could just pop in some green ribbon streamers, which is what I'll do real quick. Okay, one, two, three, four. I've got six more. So I, I'm not going to bring this ribbon tail directly across. I want it on a different plane. So I'm either going to bring it up just a little bit, or I can drop it down either way but I don't want my ribbon tails on the same plane, okay? So I've got that right there. I'm gonna put some right here, making sure that they are on different levels. Okay, I'm gonna put some up at the top. It just adds to it. I have always heard that, um, like I said, the more Mardi Gras is all about um, being full of texture and over the top, and it's okay, you know, to add, continue to add as much as you want. Um, they enjoy that, and that's a lot of fun to them. So that's why I'm adding this also. And, you know, you can add it or not add it. It doesn't matter. It's whatever your design is, right? Cut this down just a little bit. All right, I'm going to put one right up here. And plus, this is a way, so I had this left over from last year, and this is a way that I can use the rest of this supply up, which is what I'm, I'm trying to do. Okay, I'm gonna cut that down just a little bit. Keep going. 
I got two more. I think I'm going to put one down here. I'm going to go up under here and put one right here. Okay. Let me cut this down just a little bit. Do I need one? I feel like I need one more right here. <clears throat> now, you can get it in, and if you don't like it later, you can take it out. I'm not gluing any of this in. I am twisting this into the actual pine needle ties. All right, there we go. Okay, what do you think? Oh, thank you, Misty. Yes, the Mardi Gras colors are very pretty. Okay, now the fun starts. Well, let's get some of these picks in and figure out what I want to use and how I want to put them in. So I have this right here. And this would be so pretty up against it. I mean, in it. I have purple and green locust leaf. That's pretty. I think the, the purple is a little too much. Because I already have a lot of purple in here. I really like the green. That's very pretty. Let's see. Do I want to use the gold? Oh, the gold is gorgeous. I think I like the gold. I'm going to have to get another one real quick. Hold on one second. I thought I brought more over. But I didn't. So let me get this gold. Get some more gold going and let's throw some gold in okay first so all I'm doing is I'm taking one of the the uh, picks apart I'm just pulling it <clears throat> just pulling it and then I'm going to cut it okay now, the thing about swags is it doesn't take a lot of material <clears throat> to design a swag. Uh, I think it takes almost less material than a uh, evergreen. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit, and I'm going to get this ribbon tail exactly where I want it because I'm beginning to, des to design around it. And I want to cut it down and see how far or where I want to put my supplies. Okay. I really like this. I like this one coming down a little bit further than the rest of them. Let's get that right there. Right? That is such a pretty ribbon. Let's cut this right here a little bit more. And this one. Right? I like that shape better. All right. Let's begin to put a little bit of this gold in. Now, when I am gluing, I am going to the actual twist tie. I mean, the pine needle, the white pine needle shape. Okay, like Julie does, I am laying it on top of the pine and letting it adhere to it. Okay, now 
what you do to one side, you're going to do to the other. So that's what we're going to uh, do. Y'all, I think I'm trying to get a little cold. I've got the sniffles today, and I hope I'm not causing a whole lot of noise with that, but please forgive me if I am. Okay, I'm going to come up here, put this right here. Just like that. Now, I have another element that I can put right here, right? I can put a different element right here, right here, right here. I'm going in between my two golds, okay? Now, let's keep going down. Looking good so far. Right? <clears throat> yes, the purple does soften it, doesn't it? That's one that's what I'm interested. That's the look I'm going for because the sign is soft. The colors are vibrant, but the sign is soft. Okay. I saw another question. Uh, wish the easel was closer to the camera. Let me pull you in, honey. I am so sorry, y'all. Hang on one second. I'll pull you in. Okay? Okay. How about that? Can y'all see that better? Is that better for you? Those that are with me a lot, understand, they know they have to, hey, can you um, zoom in a little bit? I hope that helps. Okay, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to put some right here. Just like that. Maybe drop it down just a hair. There you go. So you can see that better. All right, everybody liking that so far? I really do. It's pretty. Okay, good, Dorothy. All right, so I've still got some more gold I could throw in, but let's shift for a minute. And let's see what else we want to add in. Okay, I'm going to stay away from this because I already have a texture, a texture of this in the gold that is very similar. So what I'm looking for now is I want to design with something with a different shape to it. Okay? Like something like this. All right? So I'm going to use this. We're going to put some of this in. Because it's a different shape, it's going to add more interest. Okay, and I'm just going to pull these apart for right now. I might end up cutting these more, which I probably will. Okay, so let's see what I've got. So I've got two different shapes, right? or two different picks on the same um, spray. So I pulled them apart and I might keep these together. I'm gonna pull this apart. Let me turn it around so you can see. They're two different kinds. So I'm gonna pull it apart. And I got one more. I got a purple and the balls. So I'm going to pull that apart, right? All right. So in the rule, uh, I mean, in the world of design, a lot of what you can do is you always start out with your largest elements, okay? <clears throat> so I started out with our sign, 
Then I put my bow on, both my bows. Then I came in with some gold. And now I want to figure out where I want this to go, right? Let's see what this is going to look like up under here. I could put this up here. I'm just playing. It's okay to play for a minute, right? I like this right here. Now, I might cut these down even more, okay? In fact, that's what I think I'm going to do. So, I'm going to cut this down some. So, I'm going to cut it right here, okay? So, I have a smaller one, and then I have a, a bigger one, okay? I have to remember that up here I can use larger elements like this. But down here they need to be smaller like this. So that's one reason why I cut it down. Now I really like it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up here. Put some glue on it. And I'm going to stick it right there. Sometimes you have to let it sit for just a second. All right. I'm going to cut my green down just like I did last time. <clears throat> I think what I like is I like the green on this side because it breaks up if, that, if I'm even going to put it there. It looks better than the gold, but we'll see. I think I want some right here. Okay, I'm going to put a still pick on this, and the reason why I'm putting a still pick on it is it needs some... Um, security going up into this right here it needs something to help it help balance I mean help hold it okay so I got that right there I'll turn that around as soon as it stops I mean just as soon as it dries the glue dries on it I like that I'm gonna come in here and put some right here Now, I'm, a, I'm going up underneath my deco mesh, and I'm laying it in on the pine. And I want this to be seen, so I want it to be on the front. But it's got to glue before I can move it around. So I'm going to leave it right there for just a second. Okay. Okay, let's keep going. I think I really like that right there. Okay, and I'm going to put my green right here. Now, again, I am, not, um, I am not putting them on the same plane. I'm putting them on different levels. Okay. And then I have one more. That's gold as well. And I'm going to put that right here on this side. Okay.
just like that. All right. I'm really liking that. How are you all? Y'all like that? What do y'all think? Okay, we are going to put some of these in, but I am going to take these apart. And we're going to work them in. They need to be shortened a little bit. There we go. Do I want to use these or these? Gosh, I really like these. I think I'm going to use these and save those for something else. How do you decide when enough is enough? I struggle to find, I struggle with trying to decide. So, I understand that is um, something we all deal with. Uh, deciding when enough is enough is when the element that you want to put in does not add anything else to your design. In other words, it doesn't lift it up. It doesn't bring it up to another level. And your eye and your gut are going to tell you that. So if it's not helping add more interest and texture to your reef and you've put too much, you've already put stuff in it and it, it just doesn't do anything, that's when enough is enough, right? That's when enough is enough. I'll show you here in a minute what I mean. All right, so I'm just cutting these up real quick. I'm gonna move these balls around and I'm gonna begin to insert these in right here. Now, there was not a twist tie close to where I want to put this ball. So I am using a still pick for length. It's going to add some length to help get that out. All right. Okay. Now, you always want to move your stuff around just to give it some interest. What we do to one side, we're going to do to the other. I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to put some right here. Okay, and I'm going to let that glue, I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to move my ball, my um, glittered ornaments around. Okay, I need to come over here to this side. Right? I can put some right here or I can put some over here. I need to figure out. I think I want it right there. So if I came over here and I put it right here, that looks like it's got wings, right? And I don't want that. I'm going to add some more interest. So I'm not going to put it on the same level. I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to drop it right here. Okay. Let it dry for a second. And I can move it around. Sometimes you just have to hold it for a minute. And it'll stay in place. Or you can take a twist tie. Why do I keep calling them twist ties? You can take a, a pine tie, a needle, and just wrap it around it. And that helps it stay in place. Right? Okay. There we go. There. Now, you see, they're not on the same plane. They're on a different level. Okay? Uh, you want to stay away from matchy-matchy, if you can. 
All right, we got one more. I'm going to keep coming down. And I'm just peppering these in. I like one right here. Figure out where I want to put this. So I'm going to cut this one up. And I think I'm going to take this little silver one off because it's a little too long. Sorry, I've got a piece of something in my shirt I've picked up. I'm going to put it right here. <coughs> And I'm going to go right behind the bow, just like that. And I can move these around a little bit. And I think I want one right here. I'm going to come in right here. Just like that. Okay. And I want one more right here. Now, I'm, I'm wondering if you all are wondering what I'm going to do on these sides right here. And that's okay if you're wondering that. Because I'm like, what are you going to do on those sides, Lorian? <laughs> no, I know what I'm going to do. I am going to put ribbon streamers right there there we go I'm gonna put ribbon streamers right here or bows or loops right I have not forgotten about that now look I still have little ones that I can come in here and add in right pop in but I'm moving on real quick um, I have these florets I can put one right here I can bring one down here however I want to do that there is so much you can do with it but let me show you the ribbon streamers real quick so I can come right in here right and I can make a loop just like this right here and I can put a loop right there okay in fact that's what I think I'm gonna do let me get a wire <clears throat> wrap this wire around Okay, now look, I'm twisting this wire all the way out. And I'm probably going to twist it about an inch, almost two, right? I'm going to cut it off, and I'm going to bend it. I'm bending it down, just like that. Then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to put a still pick on it, just like that right I'm gonna put some hot glue on my still pick I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna stick it right there right just like that I'm gonna let it dry for just a minute Okay, you can do it this way or or you can put an actual ribbon tail I love this um, ribbon right here 
So I think I'm going to use a little bit more of it. And I'm going to add another layer of ribbon tail right here. Okay. And I might do that to the other side. I was just showing you how you can do that one. This ribbon is so striking and pretty. So I'm going to add another layer of ribbon tails right here. Right? I'm going to come down just like that. You can do it either way. You can curl it out. You could bring it down. Now, let me show you what the other way you can do this. On this side, is I can put some right here. So I am just pinching and gathering the uh, top edge. I'm going to put a still pick on it. And I am going to come right in here. Let me see where I want it to go. I want it to go right up in here. Just like that. And there you go. You can add ribbon tails. Now, if this was an 8-inch um, sign, I would not do that. I would have a whole lot more room to put other stuff there. But this is 10-inch. And um, I only have a certain amount. So there you go. Now, the other thing that I want to do is I want to bring in a little bit more ribbon up here right here. I'm going to put a little bit more ribbon right there. And then I think we are done. There are so many elements that you can use. I'm going to show um, I'm going to show what it means when enough is enough. Okay? So hang tight. Okay, I just wanted a little bit more of this color right there. Uh, the other thing about designing is you want to make sure that you have evenly distributed your color throughout your design, right? And I believe we have, but there you go. I think we're finished for the time being. There you go, all right? Now look, there are all kinds of things that you can add to it. Mardi Gras is the exception when it comes to how do you know when enough is enough? Because Mardi Gras, um, I'm not saying this, these are not my words, but I have heard the gaudier it is, the better it is, right? I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. Anyway, but if I continue to come in here and add, for example, let's just say I came in and I added locust leaf, and then I came in and then I added curls, right, to it. That's not doing anything for my design. And what I mean by that is this green right now, right here, is not adding to my design. In other words, it's not improving it. It's not bringing it up to another level. It's just there, right? Now, like I said, Mardi Gras is the exception. These curls right here, they're not going to add anything to this design. This design is full. It's pretty. There's nothing else that I could add to this that is going to make you go, oh, that's going to make it look even better. So you decide when enough is enough when you don't get that answer. When that answer is, oh, that's going to make it look even better, as opposed to it, it, it's just not bringing it up another level. So I hope that helps answer that question for you. All right, let me bring it in close for you. And there we go. Right there. There it is. A very pretty... 
I love the way, sorry for my lights, but I love the way that the sign just kind of stands out. It, it kind of pops off of it. And then you have all this stuff accentuating or accenting the sign. So there it is. And um, yeah, I think we've, we've done all we could to it today, right? I love the different levels of ribbon streamers also. For me, that just adds another um, form of interest, right? And that we, that's what you're trying to do is add interest. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're done um, for today. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, Mardi Gras is always so fun. Um, especially after uh, the holidays, designing with the purple, green, and golds um, is a lot of fun. At least it brings me a lot of joy. I want to thank Julie again for having me come on um, the Southern Charm Wreath page. As always, I have such a good time with you. Um, if you're in the Reef of the Month Club, please uh, join us. Uh, we would love to have you. Uh, there is a wonderful community over there of amazing, wonderful, new, current, been there a long time designers. And it is a safe, wonderful place um, filled with a lot of support and joy. So come on over if you're, you haven't joined us over there yet. I hope you all have a wonderful evening and I hope you have a great rest of your week. You take care of yourselves. As always, remember, be a blessing to somebody else, and I hope y'all are blessed. You take care. We'll see you soon. Bye.